Good evening, everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces. Okay, good to see you all. Okay, um, I guess my role this evening is to really chat with you a little bit about what it takes to be a consultant. As Mr. Branch indicated, I've been doing this for a very long time, locally here for the past 12 years, but even prior to that and even during my time at um, IMP or with the ICD group, which is what IMP was a part of, because that was only a part of my responsibilities, I was also engaged in consultancy because many of you may not have known, but I, IMP had a consultancy arm as well. IMP provided a lot of consultancy services to just about every organization in Jamaica. And prior to that in the US, I you know, was involved with a lot of various consultancy um, activities. What I'd like to share with you this evening is what it really takes in terms of your own personal brand, what it really takes, um, the personality that you will require um, before you can embark on it, because there's a lot of really um, different opinions on what is a consultant, who is a consultant, what does a consultant do. We may have some overlap this evening because it's going to be very difficult um, once you've been a consultant not to have some of the same views and share some of the same views. So if you see some overlaps, you know, th that's okay. Um, we each have our own perspectives and, you know, different experiences. What I thought I'd start off with is something that's very funny and actually comes out of a book called Consulting for Dummies. Now, many of you know the Dummies series of books. There's actually one for consultants as well. Maybe a little hard to read because I, I scanned it, but what it says at the bottom, there's a gentleman in court here, okay? That's a judge at the top, okay? There's a judge there, I'm trying to see if this thing works, it does. Well, not as good. Um, there's a judge sitting down there, and um, there's a man in the dock, and what seems to be an attorney there. And um, the judge obviously asked him, what's a consultant? And his response to the judge was, I advised the companies where the use of hurtful language appears epidemic. That's right, Your Honor. I am an insultant consultant. So I thought that that was rather funny because as we go along, you'll find that there are those present among consultants. There are some insultant consultants, but that is not the norm and that is not what it's supposed to be. As you decide to become a consultant, there are many reasons why you may decide to enter this. Maybe you have been in a job for a long time and you have decided that you want to go out on your own, or maybe you have been downsized, right-sized, or just moved and you have decided that it's time to, to move on, okay? Um, or you may very well feel in these economic times that you're next on the list. So therefore, let me, you know, be proactive, jump out and go and find something to do for myself. But whatever the reasons are, there is a lot of excitement when you become a consultant. And we speak of a consultant in a very simple way as being a person who provides his or her unique expertise to someone else. Now, there are levels to that expertise, and I'm sure you'll hear about that as you go along this evening. There's different levels and there are different types of consultants. Um, you have consultants who are very specific and in what they do because they're specialists, real specialists in that field. I mean, for an example, somebody who is in the field of accountancy and providing accountancy um, information. Or we have what we call the generalists. I consider myself to be a generalist and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, when we speak about consultancy, we speak about 
the fact that you are required to listen well. A consultant is, a professional consultant is required to have very good listening skills. Um, we're not going to be able to go into a lot of detail this evening given the fact that each of us has only been accorded like 10 minutes of time. But as I go on, you'll see why listening is important. But a professional consultant has excellent listening skills. A professional consultant has to be able to investigate well, okay? In other words, be able to assess the situation and the challenges that are ahead. Now, you're wondering why I'm telling you this, because as we move into looking at what it takes, what it takes to be a consultant from a personality standpoint, you will see where these competencies fit in. A professional consultant also is able to analyze. Analysis is very, very important in terms of delivery of your work. If you cannot analyze what's ahead of you, what is involved, what is the situation, etc. What is the challenge? Where should we go? What is this, you know, data that we're collecting saying then really um, you cannot be a professional consultant. A professional consultant also acts as a catalyst, meaning most companies when you go in on a consulting basis expect you to leave them with value. Okay? Which means that you are expected to take them to a next level, or you're expected to um, be creative, innovative, etc., or you're expected to um, help them to overcome whatever the challenges are, etc. And a consultant, in most cases, must be able to carry out implementation. Now, there are situations where, as a consultant, you go in and you may not be the person who's going to implement some of the recommendations because you need to learn to stay within your area of expertise. There are things that you may recommend that are outside of your area of expertise. And we find a lot of times that some consultants go in and they want to be a jack of all trades, but the end result of that sometimes is shoddy work and your credibility and integrity is now at stake. So, the big question is, let us look at what it takes, and do you have the personality? Am I ready to be a consultant? Um, do I like to solve problems? Okay. Um, you have to decide whether you're somebody that likes a challenge. There's hardly ever a a project or a situation or an environment that you'll go into as a consultant that there are not problems and challenges. So do you have the personality that's going to allow you to be tolerant, patient, etc., be able to really do in-depth analysis? Can you solve problems? Can I set goals and follow them up? Many of us in our own lives tend to procrastinate so therefore, if you're going to be a consultant, can you really set goals and do you have a mechanism that allows you to follow up on things that have been set? We find that a lot of, of persons um, fall short when they go in on projects because the follow-up aspects of things are not there. Can I be independent and self-motivated? Is somebody have to wake, does somebody have to wake you up every morning to remind you that you should have been at the university on a project this morning or you should have been at organization EB, you know, on, on a project? Um, can you work on your own or do you always have to have a support system? It's very, very important to think about that. Can I make my own decisions? Or again, am I going to be totally reliant on somebody to help me to make the decisions? For example, you know, visited an organization today, collected a lot of data, I'm sitting down with it, I'm just not sure what I should do. Am I going to have to always run and seek help? Or am I good at coming up with the analysis again, doing the assessments and making decisions? Am I a leader? There are times when you will go on a project and you will be given an internal team. Can you be the leader of that internal team? Do you have leadership qualities? Am I competitive? 
I'm not saying that you need to be fierce, but you need to have that spirit of competition. It's, it's a rough market, it's a tough market, and if you are not competitive by nature, then before you even start, basically you're going to die. You, you, won't, you won't be a successful consultant. You'll give it up and you'll say, you know, but at one stage I was a consultant, you know, but I really couldn't weather the storm or I couldn't ride this, the tide, and therefore, you know, um, I've had to seek a job. Am I confident about my ability to get the job done in spite of any obstacles that I may encounter? Are you somebody that's what I call faint of heart? Are you going to come away and be totally depressed or are you going to be totally upset because the plan that you laid within the organization on whatever the project was you're carrying out did not work according to what you thought or how it should go? Or you had a manager who could not deliver on time, never delivers on time, work is not delivered to you on time, the project is postponed six, seven, eight times, and these things do happen. So you'll have to consider whether you can get the job done in spite of any obstacles that you may encounter. Very, very importantly, do you adapt well to change? Um, the world of consultancy is built around change. Many, many changes. Changes within a project, changes within the team according to you, change sometimes in something as simple as location or they may decide that in addition to a particular location, they're now throwing in two other locations, three other locations, your contract has to change, um, we might have to put a halt on something for a while. A lot of changes. Do you adapt well to changes? Okay, does change bother you? Does change manage you instead of you managing change? And sometimes it's a simple change. But if you're not somebody that's very open to change, you get ruffled at the slightest detour that's taking place. Am I creative? Sometimes you have to be very creative, both to work with others within an organization, um, to get what you want done on the project, to get what you want also out of the job, to make the job successful. Sometimes resources are slim or they're very, or none at all, and you have to get creative in terms of, okay, they assured me that they had this and they had that, but I'm now on site and it's not there, or the last time I visited with them, they're telling me that, you know, the resources they were going to give me has to change, so you have to be creative and innovative. Probably the hardest part of this is the long hours that you will work. I'm accustomed to going to bed up to last night at about two o'clock. Because sometimes during the day, you're out visiting clients, you're doing other things, and the administrative part of what you have to do, the writing, um, the preparing stuff, cannot be done during the day. And sometimes for me, I like the peace and stillness and quiet of the night. The phone doesn't ring, all that sort of stuff. So you have to be aware that you must meet deadlines that are set. And you have to always try to meet deadlines. Not every time it works out because, you know, there's some situational constraints that you may not have um, control over. But the life of a consultant is a life of long working hours. There is no time clock. Okay, when you leave the organization, your work is just beginning. So, can you work long hours and can you work with unconventional schedules? And sometimes for an unknown length of time. I'm accustomed to working Saturday and Sundays. I have a set of clients now, for instance, that I met with them at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. And for what should have been maybe a three-hour presentation, and by the time I got there, they were warning me that they have another meeting at 5. But why couldn't we have held this meeting on Sunday? And I said, sure, but you set it for Friday. But if you want us to go back and come back Sunday, we will. So I work Sundays, I work Saturdays, I work at nights, I, you know, long hours. Just came back from Montego Bay on a, a project where we went to dinner and then went back to work after dinner. 
And then after that, when we finished at 10 o'clock, I still had to go to my room and prepare for the next day and make sure I write the notes. And I was there for one week like this. So you have to be sure that you can work those long hours, which brings me to the next point. Am I in good health? Now, there are many reasons why you have to consider whether you're in good health or not. The first reason is when you work for yourself, you have no benefits, meaning no health insurance, you know, have no planned vacation, you don't have two weeks sick leave, you know, all those kinds of things. So you have to ensure that your health is good. Now, I made sure that I went out and bought health insurance, but I can tell you, it is not cheap because I pay about $12,000 a month for single coverage for my health insurance. So when you're starting out at first, many persons can't afford that $12,000 a month. So you have to ensure that you are in good health because it is a rigorous life. To be successful, it is a rigorous life. Most people think it's a very glamorous job. You know, it takes you here and it takes you there and you're making plenty of money and that sort of stuff. But if you're not in good health, you cannot also be reliable. Meaning, you can't call those clients every minute and tell them, I can't be here, I'm sick, I have a migraine. Okay, I have a migraine, I can't come to work today. Or, you know, um, I have a backache, I sat up too late, I'm so tired, I can't think straight, I can't, I can't be on the project today, all those kinds of things. Um, do I have the skills, knowledge, and experience that companies will pay for? And I think this is something, especially for graduates and recent graduates that you need to think about. And I, I really want you to think about that because I'm finding that many persons who come to the university and do a graduate degree feel that I can immediately leave and become a consultant. So you have to look at what are the competencies you really have. Now, I'm not going to necessarily get into how you build those competencies, but if you never read yesterday's Observer, was it the Observer magazine or the Gleaner? It's one or the other. Um, there is a lady who was interviewed in there yesterday, and it's a very worthwhile article to read because she indicated her past. She's Mariam, not Miriam, Mariam Robertson, Mariam McIntosh Robertson. She's MP Julian Robertson's spouse. And she indicated how she became a consultant. And one of the things she said is that, you know, she continued her education from through all the, the stages and points, went to work and then went back to school again, went to work and went back to school. And then she made sure that she got jobs where she could work on projects so she could hone her skills and prepare herself to be a consultant. So it's very, very important that you consider whether as part of your platform or your portfolio, you know, um, do you have the personality to continue to learn and are you willing to make that sacrifice to hone your knowledge and experience? Um, will, lastly, will my family support my decision? Many persons have a family, have a spouse, have children, some young children, some grown children. But being a consultant means that you have to manage that work-life balance, okay? You can't say, I've got to be at my child's prize giving today, therefore I can't present the project report. Yes, if you knew long ahead, maybe you could try to schedule the time so that that fell on a different day. But really what obtains in the end is what is convenient to the organization. And I have missed many family functions. I have had to postpone a lot of nice things, personal things, etc. because once I give my word 
to successfully complete a project, it takes precedence over everything else unless I am ill. And my family knows that. So if you are going to have a family that's not supportive of you, I'll be honest with you, consultancy is not for you because you'll have long working hours, nights that you have to lock away yourself. Um, yes, the children are there to be taken care of, but if you cannot strike that balance, then you can't be a consultant. There are other reasons too, which we'll get into, why the need to have your family behind you is very, very important because it's a tremendous risk. When you start off at first, it's a big risk. And I'm not trying to sound like the bearer of bad news, but I can tell you, I've been there, done that, I know what it is like. Um, I compare myself sometimes to the persons who sell insurance, because people have to have a particular personality to be able to sell insurance, because insurance is commission-based, and you have peaks and valleys, and if you can't weather the storm, you cannot take on these types of professions. The same thing with the people who sell insurance. There are times when there is feast or famine, and they also have to have the, the personality. So as we go on, very quickly, what makes a good consultant and the skills that we look for along, go along with the personality? The two things are actually dovetailed. Um, you have to have a favorable image. And the, the saying that says, the, the, the quotation that says, first impressions are lasting are absolutely true. Absolutely true. If you present yourself at the first meeting looking shoddy and you can't deliver yourself properly, that image lasts. You have to be able to walk the talk you have to be able to speak the talk, and I will speak you know, a little later about the communication skills. Um, your image is extremely important, okay? And there are a lot of things that go into makeup image. You know, Time will not allow me to, to really expand on that. A good reputation. A good reputation is also very important. Um, we live in a very small community here in Jamaica, and I tell people, be careful how you walk, how you talk. I've also spoken, you know, in other times about what you do on social media, okay? I am not a part of Facebook, nor Twitter, nor any other Rita or whatever, okay? Because um, I don't want to see anything negative about me up there. So if you see me on there, I didn't put me on there. Okay, I am not on social media because I have seen, um, you know, my grandchildren are on it, and I have grandchildren, I'm an old lady. And my granddaughter has shown me something on Facebook and the language is terrible. You have a bad day and you go on Facebook and use it as, you know, your mode of expression to get rid of your anger for the day. You have to know that everybody is looking at Facebook now, whether you're going for a job, and I see Mr. Sterling sitting down here, and I'm sure he will support me. If you are going for a job now, one of the things they're doing is looking on your Facebook page, you know, to see what's on there. So you went to the beach last week, and you had on the little itsy bitsy bikini, or the little skimpy bathing trunks, and you're showing all the muscles and whatever, and somebody's going to say, is this the consultant I want in my organization? What can this person really teach me? Or how can this person really help my employees to grow and you know, be better based on whatever they're, you're doing? So your reputation is very, very important, okay? If you're known as the, the extreme party goer, then what are you coming into my organization to help me do? Okay, ethical behavior, very, very important, and I'm not going to you know, go into it, but whatever you do, you must be honest, trustworthy, and you must be of high integrity. Time management, if you can't manage your time now, you can't manage your life as a consultant, believe me. You have to be able to multitask, you have to be able to juggle 
Um, sometimes I, I wonder where I get the strength and where I get the energy from. Many of you who have been in classes, I will tell you that I've come from a full day and I still come and teach from six to nine. You know, and I still leave class and go home and do work after class. Anyway, I'm, I'm treading on my, my time span here and I, I won't even look to my left, so let me hurry along. Um, planning and organization skills. You have to be able to plan and organize yourself, whether you're working from home or whether you are working for a firm, a consulting firm, or whether you have set up an office. And of course, the ability to communicate. Life as a consultant is built around communication. You have to be a very strong communicator. Okay, I can talk to the dead. I'm not saying that I'm the consummate consultant, right? And I'm not saying that I'm the gift to everybody. But believe me, I can go into a very troubled organization and bring about a certain level of calm, okay? Written skills, very important. You have to be able to write well. There's a lot of report writing. There's a lot of proposal writing. If you can't be creative and innovative in writing your proposals, then you are not getting the job. And um, in most cases, you have to bid for work. I mean, if you're going to do work in public sector, they're required to get three proposals. And a lot of times, depending on how you express yourself in those proposals, regardless of the recommendations you have, tells a story. So your communication skills are very, very important. Um, so I'll skip over the next one, which is, you know, ability to develop good consulting reports and presentations. Um, your use of technology is very important. So for those of you who you know, have ideas about going ahead in this direction, you must also improve your technology skills, the ability to, to write good things. I mean, even a simple thing as taking that picture from that book. I suddenly occurred to me last night, geez, this would be a great, a great little um, cartoon. So I took my cell phone and I took the picture of the book and then imported it into a file on the computer and then imported it into the PowerPoint. So you have to be able to think quickly and, you know, be, be creative, okay? Um, you need to be able to add value, okay? Which means that you have to be able to have the personality which allows you to give more than you promise. Simple things like a deadline for a report is the 1st of October. Deliver it on the 28th instead. Give value, okay? And, of course, Promises must be kept. So there are a lot of ways as a consultant that you can add value to the organization and value to the, the projects itself that you're doing. Um, service oriented, if you don't like to work with people, then you really can't embark upon this. Okay, you have to be able to work with people, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the naughty, the ugly, the rude, etc. okay? So you have to be very, very service oriented. Um, you, you have to almost be a service star when you enter the world of consultancy, okay? So in order to be successful, I would say to you that you need to be motivated and you need to be disciplined. You have to have great strength and survival abilities. You have to be able to create a presence. I'm not saying that when you walk in a room, you must be flashy or whatever, but you need to develop the skills so that your presence is felt in every organization that you work in. Um, you need to be able to devote the time to start a business. Starting a business, and Mr. Powell will speak to you, and I'm sure Mr. Gordon will tell you, and Dr. Lawrence is going to tell you too, that if you don't have the time to start up a business properly, then wait until you are ready. There are a lot of things that you have to do in order to put a business together properly, especially in the area of consulting. Um, you must be able to take risk, okay? Um, you need to decide whether you financially can afford to wait maybe a year, sometimes two years, before you really start making money, 
Okay, sometimes the first project you get every bit of that goes back in expenses because if you don't know how to manage your copying and try to get them to do the copying, a lot of the money earned goes in the copying or other things that you have to, you know, provide, etc., etc. You may have to subcontract some services, pay for some services, etc. So it's not a quick rich, get rich scheme, okay? You can make a lot of money, but it comes with time after you have perfected a lot of things. So you have to be able to work hard and you need to be able to network. You, you find a way to make contact, to communicate, to market what you do, etc. Your good name is worth a lot, so you have to use that to, to network. And you must have a good understanding of yourself. So as I end, I'd like you to reflect and keep in mind whether your personality and skills and what you want from a job will really enhance a consulting career. Okay, think about it. Think about what you really want to do and is this the path. Consider whether you're ready to work hard so that you can really succeed because it's socially demanding, it's service oriented, and it's a very challenging career. One of the ways to prepare, as I mentioned before, is to place emphasis on developing your skills, find a mentor, um, volunteer to work on projects, and look for things which can give you some additional skills and competencies. And most of all, continue your education. It doesn't mean necessarily coming back to the university to do another course. It means reading, keeping abreast of what is happening, staying updated. Continue to read about consultancy as you try to prepare yourself both mentally, physically, and financially to go into such a career. Thank you.